about four months ago, I saw a Facebook ad for a lot of old apples. And this is what it was. Uh, it was three Macintoshes. And honestly, I really only wanted this Power Mac G3 mini tower. Because in my mind, if you're looking for a Macintosh bridge machine, this era is kind of what you want once we <laughs> load it out with everything we need. But as a bonus, I got these two. This is a Power Mac 6160 and a Performa 6116 CD. Basically the same thing, uh, a year apart as far as manufacturing dates. However, all of these were pretty much left in a shed for years. <laughs> and uh, they weren't in the best shape, especially these two. Um, it was really just the motherboard internally with uh, power supply and uh, floppies. They were pretty much stripped down. All the RAM was taken, uh, the hard drives were gone. Both of them had bad battery corrosion. Unsurprisingly, the batteries were left in all of these years. Um, both of these boards cleaned up surprisingly well. One of them, the whole battery holder was gone. There was some damage to the legs on the RAM. This one uh, had some missing capacitors on it due to corrosion. Uh, one of those boards I sent down to Steve at Mac84 for him to work his magic and either put it into parts for his machine or get it working again and use it. Uh, this one, I'm gonna try my luck at it and, and see if I can get it working. Uh, but that's that's going to be for a later date. Really, for this video, I'm focusing on this G3 mini tower. So let's check out the damage of it, see what we can do, and talk a little bit about how it was configured and what I think this machine did in a previous life. Other than some dirt and dust, the machine's in really great shape. What caught my eye first was that big WUNH sticker on the front, which is a radio station for the University of New Hampshire, and what I thought was a zip drive in that bay. But if you look a little closer, there's a hard drive hiding in there. In the back, we have all the standard ports that you'd expect from a Macintosh of this era, but we also have three nice expansion cards, SCSI, another Ethernet port, and two USB, making this, in my opinion, a really good candidate for a bridge machine. A lot of people forget that there was a time where Apple computers were incredibly user serviceable. This machine is one of my favorites. You just flip two switches and the entire case butterflies open. I recommend doing this laying down, but it captures better on camera this way. And with the top flipped up, you have access to the entire motherboard. And with a little bit extra work, you can get access to all the drives, uh, the power supply, make upgrades, add and remove things as you will. I would even argue that some of the Macs this era are a little more user-friendly than even modern PCs. It's just a really great design that we don't see a lot anymore. Internally, there are three hard drives. Unfortunately, none of these would boot, kind of, uh, but that does make this machine a little more interesting. When I first got this machine, it attempted to boot into what I believe is 10.2. It would never actually fully boot. And the more I messed around with it, I found out that the other two drives were dead. They just wouldn't even power on. Based having three drives, the extra cards, the WUNH logo, I like to think that this machine might have been in a DJ booth at the University of New Hampshire and they had those extra drives and the SCSI port and USB ports to bring more music into play. Uh, of course, I have no proof for that, but that's the story that I like and I'm gonna stick with it. Right away, this machine came with a very respectable 512 megabytes of RAM and it's running OS 9.2.1. I intend on keeping this. I will do a fresh install just to make sure we're starting over from scratch. We do have some room. We have three memory slots available. They're all populated right now, but I'm going to dig through my box and see if we can find some new sticks to at least replace one or both of those 128 megs. And under devices and volumes, we see our SCSI card, our USB card. We also have Ethernet on the motherboard as well as an Ethernet card. Only one hard drive. We are going to add a second one in here, though. 
We'll get a fresh install of OS 9.2.1 and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Well, I was able to dig through my box of RAM and find some compatible sticks for this machine. So now we're up to 640 megabytes, which is more than enough than what I'll need for a bridge machine. But I'm going to buy some more and max this out because anytime you're working on an old machine, let's try to max it out as much as we can. Uh, another thing I did is throw in an extra hard drive. So now I have 73 gigabytes available. I'm going to fill this up with games, applications, and anything else that I want to easily transfer between modern and older machines. Because after all, this is going to be my bridge machine. Its sole purpose in life is going to be transferring files between older Macs and newer machines. Before I install anything else, like I said, I do have a zip drive and a special SCSI treat that I want to use in this machine. I kind of wanted to mess around with it to make sure everything was set up right and I did get it on the internet, so now we can visit Marchintosh.com to see all the Marchintosh shenanigans that are going on. No vintage Mac is complete without going to retro.mac84.net. This is Steve's website. If you're not subscribed to Mac84 on YouTube and following him on Twitter, Instagram, and everywhere else, highly recommend it. Uh, absolute brilliant man when it comes to uh, restoring older Macintoshes and a, and a wealth of knowledge. We're also going to bookmark the Macintosh Garden because this is a great website to have in your pocket if you restore older Macs. All your applications and games are here. Anything that you would want for your older Mac, you're going to find on Macintosh Garden. And I want to give a, a call out and a very special thanks to Sean over at Action Retro for making FrogFind and 68K.News. These are two websites that he's developed specifically for older machines. They're not Mac specific. Any machine that can access the internet can use these two. 68k.news is, well, what it sounds like. It's a news site, but it's stripped down. So you're not getting ads. You're not getting pictures. You're not getting videos. It's just the news. It's just the words. It's exactly what you need on an older machine. And to be honest with you, I use this on my modern machine, my T495, my daily driver, because it's nice just to read the news and not be distracted by pictures, video, advertising, just all the other junk that a lot of these websites have. So it's really great just to be able to go here, pick an article, and just have the words. Frog Find is similar. It's another stripped down version of search. So we can look for Power Mac. And we're going to get a very stripped down version. So we can go to the Wikipedia page. And here it is. This is the Wikipedia page for Power Macintosh, but it's slimmed down for older machines. And this is exactly what you need. There's no distractions, no fuss, no muss. It's the information that you need right at your fingertips. So thank you, Sean, for making these two for the community. Uh, and special call out to Steve over at Mac84 who made this adorable little frog logo. Um, but these are really great tools, and they're just things that you can use to make your system useful once again. Another really great feature of this machine is the dual USB ports on the back. So I can take a modern USB thumb drive, kind of what I have right here with a lot of the games that I need, plug it right in and transfer these over onto my apps and stuff drive. This makes this really, really convenient to use USB, plug external drives in or thumb dot drives and easily transfer items across. The zip drive's not color matched, but that's something that we can work on later on. With that, this makes this, again, the perfect bridge machine. If you watch any of Action Retro's videos, this looks very familiar. This allows me to use Blue SCSI, put an SD card in there, transfer information. I can transfer it from the USB port to the back, zip drive, floppy drive, or read from the CD-ROM. In my opinion, the ultimate bridge machine. Oh, and don't forget, I can use Ethernet as well. So all modern conveniences and connectivity that you need in a beautiful beige Power Mac G3. Well, she's not the prettiest belle of the ball, but she's mine. And you can guarantee that this Power Macintosh G3 is going to be a powerhouse in RTOD for years to come. 
anytime you see a Macintosh from here on out, if there are programs on it, chances are they came from this Power Mac. I'm really happy it's in my collection, I'm happy it's running, and I'm happy that you watched. If you like what you're doing here at RTOD, please like and subscribe, and as we close out Marchintosh 2023, check out that hashtag, hashtag Marchintosh, and see all the other creators who are sharing their Macintosh projects. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and we'll catch you next time.